Hey YouTube, another video. And uh, this time I'm going to share with you um, the build process of a simple project, which is a counter. And uh, the purpose of this counter is to count products which travel across a, uh, a, a guide rail. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background information, um, a friend of mine works at this uh, metal fabrication shop and he came to me and he asked if I can make um, some sort of a counter for him that will count products that um, that he needs to make at a station and he also needs to count them and uh, place them in batches and then also uh, note these uh, things, everything manually, everything by uh, using just a pen and paper. So uh, <clears throat> his idea was just to mount a counter uh, on the on the guide rail, uh, something not permanent that he can move around and use with different uh, sort of products. And uh, he asked me if I can help him with it, and I obviously agreed. I thought it was an interesting project to share, um, as it is um, quite simple to make. But then again, there are some things that you need to think about and take into consideration. And I think that it would be a nice um, video. So um, first of all, let's just talk about this, uh, this, these products. Um, as you can see, I made here um, a small uh, schematic, which is based on photos that, um, that he showed me. Um, unfortunately, I can't share these photos with you. I can't show you any video of the actual setup because it's, it's, it's in a company and um, it's, not, it's not permitted but I have some uh, testing um, um, parts here which I'm gonna show you in a moment but this is uh, basically uh, what, uh, what it looks like there is a station here and um, uh, someone is working this station taking products and finishing them, drilling them or uh, anything like that and then they're placed on this uh, long rail here which has a stopper here at the end at, at this current stage and once they fill up a whole b batch of these products and they know um, we made 40 or 50 or 60 or however they note it down and then they let all the products roll into this bucket so the idea that uh, my friend um, had um, is just to place a counter which will either look like this just a stand that is hovering above this uh, rail or something that is clamped on the rail itself and uh, it will count the products and then it will remove this task from the worker that, sta uh, that works the station so he can only focus on um, finishing the products and then he places them on the rail and they roll uh, to the bucket and they get counted along the way right now um, you can see a, a video right here in the corner uh, it is a segment of this rail just uh, given to me for testing purposes and you can see how the products uh, roll on it and our goal in this video is to make a counter as simple as possible um, that will be able to count these these specific products that go on the rail and also other ones which I have no idea what shape they have uh, but then again my task here is just to create these this counter with uh, these um, specific products that uh, roll on the rail that will be the what this uh, video is about um, I'm just going to cover quickly uh, the, the, the parts that I asked my friend um, to order for this um, it's very simple, you want to keep it as straightforward as possible no messing around with the soldering and uh, just trying to keep everything modulated so I have an Arduino Uno I have this, uh, this LCD display which comes from this company Olimex and it's basically just an LCD display which uh, comes on a shield and it has four uh, buttons that, uh, that can be used other than that we have a sensor, an infrared uh, sensor it can measure uh, between 4 and 30 centimeters and it will provide uh, an analog output between um, 0 0.3 volt for uh, the 30 centimeter uh, distance and 3.1 volt for 4 centimeter distance that's according to the manufacturer data sheet I just crossed here the name of the, the supplier we don't want to make, make any commercials here um, this is the cable that will go to the sensor and it's basically just a, a voltage ground 
and the voltage output uh, cable. These are the four elements that, um, that I will be using uh, to make this counter and this is what this video is going to be about. Uh, before I go about building it and um, then later on coming back and showing you how it works and also explaining if there were any difficulties along the way, just a, a few tips that I can give you on why I've decided to use these four elements. Um, you wanna when when you're going about some project or building a solution, you wanna keep a rule in mind of making your life as easy as possible. So you don't wanna start fiddling around with soldering and making your own customized uh, print plates unless you really have to, unless there's no other solution. Uh, you also don't want to start dealing with cables and breaking them out to get voltage and, and ground and everything. And that's why I chose to buy this pre-made uh, shield. It saves me uh, a hassle of uh, just connecting the same LCD that you would buy for the same money but you will need a cable and connect it to the Arduino and everything. So a shield makes um, uh, a life much more easier. Also the sensor, the, you can go about making your own infrared sensor and just soldering everything and with resistors and all the bunch of components that need to come with it. But then again, this one just costs three euros and it will save you a whole bunch of hassle. It has a data sheet, it has everything with it, so it will make our life much easier. So that's uh, just a basic tip that I have to give you about uh, going about these sort of uh, projects and making a solution. That's it. I'm going to pause this video now and uh, I'm going to go about uh, the work and I'll see you soon with the finished result. Maybe I also add um, a video in the middle of just showing different uh, steps that I'm taking in this whole project. But eventually you'll see uh, the finished project. I don't see any sort of uh, special problems um, with this build. It's quite easy. Every, most of the work is just done by code. And um, that's the most important part. The only thing that I might uh, see as a problem is this uh, sensor. This sensor uh, basically is meant to be used for um, like robots and things that uh, travel on the ground and they need to find some sort of obstacles. So it might be that I will need to add a, um, a, a some sort of a directional um, housing here to make sure that the, the, the light is not spread too widely. We want to focus it. So uh, maybe I'll add um, just something like this, uh, like a hollow pen and um, that will be able to give a more clear direction of the light and then if it reflects on something then it will come back to the sensor but that's it we'll deal with that uh, later if it uh, needs to be I'm uh, gonna go about this uh, project now I'm gonna pause this video and uh, I'll see you soon okay I'm back and um, I finished it you're gonna see a video uh, in a moment showing um, how it works and how it functions um, most of the work here went uh, again into writing code and not specifically the code for the sensor uh, that's just a few lines but uh, more just to get the, the whole menu to work and the, the functions here and the buttons and uh, just to make it a bit more user friendly so that it can be configured and uh, calibrated um, on the site itself. Um, right now I'm going to put a video here um, on the side uh, while I'm talking where you can see um, how it works. It works, it counts the units that go on the, um, on the guide rail. Um, it counts a single one, it will count several ones that uh, just follow one, uh, one another. Um, it can also count um, two or three that are following um, right one after another. So. Um, I'm just um, um, going to cover some, some of the functions that I've uh, implemented here. Um, I left some room for games so that my friend can um, play around with it and also learn um, himself before he goes and, uh, and installs it. But uh, I'm going to turn it on and um, hopefully um, you'll be able to see the display 
but you can. So let me just um, turn the lights here off. There we go. Okay, so now it's a, it's a bit more um, clear. I hope that you can see it on the camera. But um, what I did, I've implemented a menu and um, the way that it uh, works is that uh, we have the sensor here. This sensor will detect a distance from an object which uh, be between 4 and 30 centimeters and it will provide an analog output for it. And um, what we can see here on the menu is that we have a, a minimum uh, value of uh, 420. This is just the integer that comes from the from the analog uh, input and um, this value will indicate the threshold for uh, when an object has passed and when um, the counter needs to um, reset itself for another count. Uh, then next to it we have an uh, SMX value, so a sensor maximum value and this will be the value that would indicate that uh, an actual object has passed and once it has passed it the, the program will wait until the minimum threshold uh, was reached and then it will reset itself so that we don't get a situation where we get counts while an object is, is moving and we just get uh, false readings. Um, aside from that we can see here that we have the actual value displayed by the sensor so if I if I just put my finger like that, you can see that it changes accordingly and we can use the two buttons to change either the minimum uh, value or uh, we can change the maximum value. Depends on the, on the uh, size of the object. This assumes that all objects are round but uh, they will have a space between them and by uh, changing these two values we can, um, we can use um, a different setting, a different sort of calibration for different products um, that this device will count and then next to it we just have here um, the total that it counted so far. If I press here it goes into counting mode it still will uh, show here the value um, of the sensor and then when I just do this with my finger you can see that it's counting and then I can go back to the menu and it will show us the counts here, it will hold it into memory. Obviously there's no memory here, so if we turn it off, um, it just goes back to the default values and it will start uh, counting from zero. But um, there's no reason to turn this off and um, this is basically uh, the setup that it's going to be. So. Um, if you want to download the source code, I'm going to leave a, um, a link at the description of this video. It will just be a link to download a file from my, uh, from my website. Other than that, um, the code itself, inside there's not a lot to explain. Most uh, of the chunk of code uh, just deals with this menu and getting all these uh, functions to work. And then uh, inside the loop itself you will find the actual uh, counting mechanism and uh, it will count. It will then go into a loop waiting for the minimum threshold value to reach and then it will reset and set itself ready for another count. So uh, that was it. That was um, uh, this little project. I hope uh, that you liked it and I hope that you learned from it. If you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and that's it. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.